Hey everyone, Raj Ute here for Reckoner and we're doing something a little different for our Patreon supporters today. Trying out something called unedited or unfiltered or unnamed at this point. Uh, and basically it's going to be me talking through a product that we've been sent to review and I've had a chance to look at it briefly, um, but not written up the full review yet. So it's getting eyes on the product before everyone else. Uh, gives you an unedited opinion, uh, so I can be a little more couth, I think, for want of a better word. Uh, and we're going to kick things off with a product that's just about to launch here in Australia. And it is none other than the NVIDIA Shield. Uh, now, for those of you who don't know what the NVIDIA Shield is, it is an Android TV box, which, if you don't know what that is, is very similar to Apple TV. It's just... Android's version of Apple TV. Uh, I've never used an Android TV product before, so I was pretty keen to check it out. Um, it does a lot of things the same, and it does a lot of things different. Um, what makes the Shield different is that uh, coming from NVIDIA, it has a lot of gaming enhancements to it, which make it uh, popular. And the product has actually been out around the world for a couple of years now. This is the latest version, and they're just finally getting around to releasing it here in Australia. Uh, to give you an idea of price off the bat, it comes in two different versions. There's one version that has everything you see here on the box, which is a game controller, the actual unit itself, and a remote control. That retails for $329. And then there's a second version which has no game controller. So you just get the box itself and the remote, and that's $249. Uh, both of them have 16 gig in there. Um, they're running in, uh, NVIDIA's Tegra X1 chip. Um, they use uh, Bluetooth and stuff for the communications and HDMI and, and everything else. It's pretty stock standard. So really the biggest difference is just having this controller or not. There, are a, there is a pro version, I believe, overseas, which gives you a lot more storage space than the 16 gig that comes inside of this, but that is not on the Australian market. So this is what you're getting in the box. Um, so let's uh, take a look at the actual unit itself. This is it. Uh, it's pretty decent size, in well, small size, I should say. It's a lot thinner than the Apple TV, the Puck, which is probably about more two or three times higher, but it is longer uh, and about the same depth. It's pretty sleek. It's uh, sort of, you know, your, your typical gloss black plastic with a matte sort of motif. There's a, you see a green section there, that's where it lights up, it's single LED. You can turn that off if you don't really like it. And then on the back, uh, we have Ethernet, HDMI, and a couple of USB 3 ports, I believe. And then this weird one down on the end, that is its power uh, port, which, uh, I sadly is not a standard port, it's not like a USB port or anything like that, although it does kind of look like USB-C, although when I looked it up I couldn't get a definitive answer that it was. Uh, it definitely doesn't look it on the plug, but thankfully the power adapter that comes with it is quite small, you're not getting another sort of unit that's about the same size as this, it's just a regular sort of power plug, so you pop that in, stick that behind your TV, um, or stand it upright, so it kind of does like a PlayStation deal as well uh, and away you go obviously it comes with a remote the remote is pretty big um, compared to the unit there it's quite quite large uh, your typical sort of uh, buttons on there you've got your directional pad um, uh, your home play uh, a microphone button which will sort of uh, launch google's assistant and then hidden away underneath in here is a slide, a touchscreen control for volume, which is pretty cool. So that's all sort of built in uh, and, and works pretty well. The other device, which uh, I got in my version, is the controller. The controller is pretty decent size, about the same size as an Xbox One controller. I like the feel of it. It does have this kind of rigid uh, pattern to it, which makes it a little different to hold. Um, but in your hands, hands is a good fit. My hands aren't ginormous by any means, but they're not tiny either. Um, it feels quite nice there. 
let's talk about Android TV for starters because it's something I, I hadn't used before and um, I'm impressed. Um, it's very similar to Apple TV. If you've used Apple TV before, you're gonna be right at home using Android TV. The, the differences for me are, uh, obviously there's no Apple TV, so you can't stream directly to it. It does have Chromecast though, which makes sense. It's a, a Google sort of product. Uh, but that means if you're on an iPhone or an iOS device, unless the application that you're running supports Chromecast, uh, say for instance YouTube, then you won't be able to throw your picture up to it. You can't just stream the iOS interface directly onto this guy, uh, like you can with an Apple TV. But if you've got an Android device, well, of course you can. So pluses and minuses there, depending on what your ecosystem at home is. Uh, other things on Android TV, super easy to install apps, obviously um, has a suite of apps available through the Google Play Store. Um, the Shield launches with a bunch of localized apps, which is really cool. There's Stan, you've got Yahoo, um, and a few other local content providers. Also, of course, you're getting Netflix, you're getting uh, YouTube, um, Twitch, things like that, all ready to go out of the box. Twitch isn't interestingly enough on Apple TV. So there you go, better, better platform if you're into watching games being streamed. But what impresses me most about Android TV is when I started using Plex on it. Now, this little guy is uh, even better for Plex for another reason that I'll get into in a moment. But for any of you out there using Plex, and I'm sure there are a lot of you, then you know you connect it up to your media server, whether that's a NAS or another computer running it and stuff like that. You, you use your remote, you go into the Plex application and away you go. With Android TV, if I run a search for say the show community, uh, not only is it bringing me back results from uh, its own affiliated systems like Google Play Store and where it's renting out TV or selling TV shows, uh, it is also searching across my Plex database coming off of my server. So it has that cross app platform integration that we do not get on Apple TV whatsoever. You are so locked into the ecosystem that it is just impossible for that to happen. Uh, and that feature alone makes this a really, really nice box to have and makes me wanna use it a hell of a lot more than the Apple TV. Uh, searching for YouTube trailer, or searching for a movie trailer, it automatically picks up results from YouTube. Searching for uh, actor brings up results for movies from the stores, from Netflix, from Plex, where if you've got all your metadata in there, of course. So yeah, really impressive to see that working as it should out of the box. Uh, the other point that I touched on very briefly there about Plex is that this little guy is actually a Plex media server itself. So all you need to do is plug in a USB drive of some kind with all of your um, movies, music, whatever you have running through Plex, podcast now, uh, and it will act as a media server on your home network. That's really cool because your partner could be watching something on TV, MasterChef, I don't know, whatever floats the boat, not my thing. Uh, and then you could be streaming the DVD ripped copy of uh, The Fifth Element because you legally own it and it's stuck on your now Plex media server. So that's, that's really impressive. I, I really, um, really like that they were smart enough to, to put that all inside of this, this little guy. Obviously being an NVIDIA product, gaming is sort of central to it in one form or another. Now, the Shield supports two different services. One is called GeForce Now, and that is NVIDIA's streaming service. The other is, uh, sorry, is one is games, eh, I'm getting it wrong. One is GeForce Now, that's NVIDIA's streaming service that has the games playing off of the cloud devices uh, and literally pumping it out over the internet to your home using the uh, game controller to play the games and then sending the signal back from what is happening here to NVIDIA's cloud servers and it moves you around and then it sings you back. So that is the utopian future of gaming where you don't have to own a massive PC, you don't have to own something that's super spec'd up, 
you literally have a box that streams all of the video and audio to you from a cloud computer that calculates it all and does it. That doesn't work for shit here. Uh, our internet sucks. Uh, I've never seen it work in person, so I can't really tell you whether it's, it's good or not. Uh, even on uh, NVN, I still had issues connecting to it. But uh, NVIDIA say they've got about 150 sort of AAA titles that are running on the service. If you have a fantastic internet connection, then maybe it's for you, but not for me personally. The other uh, application that you have with the Shield is called Game Stream, and that is having a PC in your home or on your network which has a game installed and then streaming it to your TV. Uh, it supports 4K, it just has to be on your local network and you're running the GeForce Experience software on your PC and the game stream software on the Shield, which of course it comes with. So that, it's super easy to set up. You uh, basically turn on your PC, have that, uh, the GeForce Experience software running in the background, which it probably is anyway, because it downloads the latest drivers. It connects directly into, into Steam or it picks up what uh, NVIDIA classify as the optimized titles which have specific settings that they provide all through that software. Uh, and then on, the, on your TV, you use your controller to navigate to the app and it just basically shows you every game that you have on your PC. Click one, launches it on the PC, streams it directly to your TV. If you look at your PC whilst you're playing the game, it is literally playing the game on the monitor. So, you know, someone can't be using the PC at the same time because whatever's on the screen is being streamed out. Uh, I, I've tried it over Wi-Fi a couple of times in-house. My router, TV, and um, PC are all within about a, a five to 10 meter sort of triangulation of one another. It's not great. Um, I have a pretty extreme uh, ubiquity setup and uh, it, it's still, you see it sort of throttling down and throttling up and uh, the control responsiveness is not ideal. I would definitely not be playing a first person shooter using Wi-Fi. Plug it all into ethernet, different story. Absolutely seamless. Uh, it's like just sitting in front of the PC. So really impressive unit. I uh, am pretty much sold on giving the review the title of One Box to Rule Them All because this is literally my streaming device of choice now, whether it be for TV, Plex, movies, other applications or streaming services, gaming. Um, it, it really is an impressive unit. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to have one in my little hands. Uh, should you buy one? Well, it's going to depend on your personal needs and what fits into your home entertainment system and gaming or entertainment lifestyle. Is it just for gamers? Definitely not. Um, you could get by with just the remote version, um, but it does have obviously the niceties of um, the, that game aspect to it if you want. It is a very capable little device of running games on it as well. Uh, there's quite a few sort of uh, optimized titles that NVIDIA sort of tout uh, and you know they're, they're fun but they're obviously not the full feature titles that you come to expect when you play them on a PC or on a console. So there you have it, the NVIDIA Shield. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed uh, me doing this sort of unfiltered, unedited thing then uh, by all means leave a comment on the post uh, and if you do then we'll do more of them. If you don't then uh, it's a one-off and thanks for watching.